Welcome in to another edition of College Hockey Southwest Weekly. Also on the podcast version right now, this is the uh, the, the premiere, is that we call it? The, the initial, what do we call it, Tom? I, I think it's the premiere, the world premiere. <laughs> the world premiere, Scott, of the podcast, along with College Hockey Southwest Weekly. This is exciting. We're, we're getting into some uncharted territory here. We are moving up in the world, and so are the Sun Devil hockey team. I call it the biggest snowball in college hockey right now because it keeps gathering up size and speed, and, and it's rolling right now. Let's talk quickly about the rankings. Number nine in the pairwise is where everybody wants to be. That's the big one, right? Uh, number 15 in, U- in USCHO, and number 13 today in USA Today. So I'm smelling top 15 in everything. Yeah, that's, it's pretty impressive. And again, I mean, I sound like a broken record at this point, but they do. They continue to impress me, the Sun Devils hockey team. And obviously now they're impressing people on a national stage. A couple of big wins again on the road this weekend. Um, tremendous alumni contingent traveling to see the team play this weekend as well. So that's really cool for these guys. It, it makes it like a mini home game on the road. And uh, you know what, Scott? This is, this is where... Um, as we move closer to you know the tournament in a couple of weeks here and then uh, through into the the new portion of the calendar in 2019 um, they really have to continue to push the success so far has been tremendous but by no means can you take your foot off the gas well this weekend is another home series here at beautiful Oceanside Ice Arena it's another matchup with Tigers we played the Princeton Tigers last week and got a sweep including a 3-2 overtime win on Saturday night and now they're coming back to uh, the beautiful friendly confines here to take on Colorado College. You know something about that program, so give me your uh, your gut check on how this is going to go next this coming weekend. I do. I actually uh, have several friends over in the Colorado <laughs> College side. So just hockey is such a small world. Just right. people I've known throughout the years working in hockey and being around so many different places. Um, and Colorado College is they're up and down as a program uh, and it really depends on their recruiting class it's a little tougher for them to recruit sometimes because of their academic standards um, which is no slight on Mike Havlin or the job he's doing over there but it's just it's just different from what some schools face Um, so for that reason uh, Colorado College really depends on whether or not the big names are going and so they they can have those one or two you know big time guys but if you take them out kind of like Princeton Princeton what yeah if not the top line one of the top lines in the nation well if you keep those guys off the score sheet you've got a much better chance of winning the hockey game and I think it's going to be kind of the same MO this week Um, take away the big names for Colorado College and you've got a great chance well last weekend we had uh, scoring from all different areas again Mm -hmm. Um, we have a guest on today that's going to talk about the new flashy uh, uniform combinations that were up to 135 now I think for ASU including helmets gloves jerseys pants socks of the way they can mix and match. So exciting news from that end of it, but also exciting news on the ice. So let's take a quick break. We'll come back with our first guest, uh, Sendable Equipment Manager, John Loeffner. Hello, everybody, and welcome in. We're doing a brand new podcast here, as well as the video on College Hockey Southwest Weekly, and John Loftner joining me, the head equipment manager for Arizona State Hockey. And uh, we've got some fun things to talk about here, John. You got some uh, some new toys, if you will, to play with right behind us, uh, a beautiful black Sun Devils jersey. Talk to us a little bit about where the jersey came from and uh, how it came to be here. Yeah, so uh, we were super excited to be the first NCAA Adidas program to roll out a third alternate jersey. Um, the folks at Adidas were phenomenal in uh, getting this jersey designed and developed for us. Um, you know, when we went, when we changed our jerseys this summer, uh, we knew that that black jersey that we had was a fan favorite and that a lot of people were going to be sad to see it go. Um, we kind of knew the whole time that it was coming back, but uh, it just took a little bit of time to rework it and uh, we're really excited with how it turned out. So let's talk a little bit here. Uh, we'll bring the jersey up front about some of the features on this jersey and the Adidas jerseys in general because Adidas is really getting into the jersey making now. Yeah, so again, super fortunate to be partnered with Adidas. They obviously have the NHL contract, so that uh, helps us out a lot. We get the exact same access to the uh, as the NHL teams do to their uniform program. Um, so we're calling this one Sparky. Uh, so 
that was just kind of the code name that we had while we were developing it and uh, we, we like it so we're gonna stick with it um, they did the inside the collar decoration for us again really nice when it's hanging in the in the locker room it looks really great um, we did the we have the Adidas Addy Zero numbers system again lighter um, it, it cut weight by I think it's 30 percent on the numbers so um, we're just really excited to, to bring this silhouette in to play Oh, and it looks great. The black looks fantastic. Uh, how many combinations do you have now? Have you counted? So the, uh, with the black jersey, we added a fifth helmet, a black helmet with chrome uh, stickers. Uh, that brings us up to 135 combinations this year, for, up from 72 earlier this year. So uh, you must have helped packing all those bags and making sure you have the right socks, the right helmets for road trips. It's got to be insane. It, it's a bit of a task, but uh, I got some pretty good students that helped me out, so they, they kind of are in charge of that. So, And also, you're holding a stick here, uh, and CCM, these are, I guess, flashy is the first word that comes to mind. This thing looks amazing. Yeah, so uh, along with the, the um, black jersey, we wanted to um, kind of really incorporate every aspect into this uniform design from the helmet to the jersey gloves pants and we kind of looked at the next place we needed to take it and we thought that was the stick um, CCM uh, was exceptional in developing this chrome gold stick just for us it is uh, it's their jet speed stick um, chrome gold special graphic package just for ASU and uh, we're really excited about this too and I think the guys were pretty pumped on it as well well, I imagine, too, that, uh, I mean, you come in, you see the new sticks, the new uniform. I mean, the black, as you mentioned, is a fan favorite. This is tremendous uh, for a program that nationally is on the rankings now, is really starting to garner some attention. And now, I mean, some pretty cool duds to go with it. Yeah, uh, we, we like to say that we have the best uniforms in college hockey. Um, we, uh, we think we've really made some strides this year, and uh, we're not done. Well, and uh, John, I, I, so I won't let, ask you to let the cat out of the bag, but uh, I mean, as things continue to grow and become more popular, obviously, and with Adidas, the partnership for you guys, I mean, that means you will continue to move everything forward. Yeah, we, uh, I think I've mentioned before, we kind of work 12, 24, and 36 months out. Uh, so we're already working on stuff for next year and the year after that. So That's incredible, the lead time on those. I, I can't imagine you're having to think two, three years down the road already. Yeah, it's just one of those things. It gives them, it makes sure that when we release a product, we're really 100% satisfied with it and, and stoked for the uh, country to see it. So. One of the unsung heroes in any hockey program is the equipment guy. So, John, thanks for joining us. Thank you very much. Everybody, Tom Callahan here, joined by Steen Pashnuk, talking a little bit about uh, Steen. The way things are going for this ASU men's hockey team right now, big weekend series for you guys. You come out with a couple of big wins at Princeton. First of all, tell us about that. Uh, I wasn't there actually. I took a uh, puck to the ankle before we left, so I sat back on that one. But uh, I watched the games and looked good. I mean, the guys came out ready to play uh, Friday night. They looked good. Um, Joey Decord obviously still in his head again for us. He's been uh, our best player all year by far. Um, Saturday night, again, they came out firing, and uh, Princeton had a little bit of a pushback there, but we weathered the storm and, um, you know, just got a gritty goal by Jake Clifford to, uh, you know, get the win for us a second night. You know, it's interesting. Scott and I have been talking this year. You guys are finding ways. It's like the depth in this team is incredible. Different guys stepping up at different times. You know, that's what, what we've been talking about, too, is that, uh, you know, we have, like, our, our top scorers, our skill guys, but we're also getting uh, the third and fourth line chipping in um, offensively when they can. And um, it's, uh, it's really, really good. Something really good to have on a team is that uh, all lines can score, and I think that's a huge reason why we're doing so well is because, you know, everyone's contributing and everyone's finding ways to chip in. Also seems to do a lot for the team confidence when you know, hey, to a man, down the bench somebody can make a play absolutely yeah I mean uh, I think it even helps take a little pressure off like those first line guys just knowing that um, they have some guys behind them who can uh, help them put the puck in the net um, obviously if uh, you're on that top line and no one else is contributing you feel like you got the weight of the world on your shoulders so if you got other guys helping you out I mean it takes a lot of pressure off and just makes you play better I think 
I know that uh, coach often says, hey, there's no pressure on us. The expectations weren't there for this team. You're a ranked team now, but do you still have that same mentality of, you know, hey, there's no pressure on us, it's on the other guys? You know what, I think we do have some more pressure on us now. We're showing the country, um, you know, what we can do as a team and what we're capable of, and uh, we're surprising a lot of teams. But I think maybe that pressure wasn't on us in the first 10 games of the season. Maybe people thought, oh, they're just on a hot streak. But I think people know now that, um, we're the real deal and you know, we're a contender and now I think uh, there is pressure on us to continue to compete and perform every night to uh, you know, make our way to that tournament. I imagine that also drives you though night in night out. Absolutely yeah you know when we're going to the rink every day um, we're just thinking about that NCAA tournament and thinking about uh, teams coming into our barn and just uh, how hard we have to play to keep um, you know keep contending and keep climbing those uh, ladders in the um, in the poles. And I think that I mean it kind of loops back to almost the same thing we just said a little while ago but the, the confidence is there the belief is mm -hmm. there I mean I really feel like every time I talk to you guys you know in that room you're capable of doing it. I think that's a huge thing which has changed from uh, the first few years since I've been here to this year um, you know the last couple of years our mentality was kind of let's go into these places and not try and lose by too much kind of thing where now we're going in fully expecting a series sweep and um, you know we're confident and we know that we have a team in there that we can we can go to the tournament and we can compete with and that's the biggest difference is just us knowing that we're good enough for it. You also have uh, your brother on the team as well what's it like having him as a teammate? Uh, it's great. I love playing with him. Um, you know, we've been best friends since we were little kids playing mini sticks together. So to come here with him was amazing. Um, it's funny, actually, the uh, the weekend last last week before they left on the trip, he was the one who hit me in the in the ankle <laughs> with the slap shot. So uh, he sent me a big apology text. But you know what? It's it's great. I love playing with him. Um, spent my whole life doing everything with him and you know we're fully planning on sticking that close throughout our life too well now you've got something you can always hold over his head for sympathy later if you need it you got that card to go to yeah exactly i'll just tell him i remember when you hit me in the foot with that puck you owe me well, looking forward here, Colorado College coming in this weekend. Uh, I, I know, you know, Coach Powers always says, hey, every opponent's going to be a tough one. But, you know, these guys are, are also trying to be a program uh, on the rise, coming back a little bit for them as opposed to where you guys are building from scratch. But, uh, I mean, two teams really hungry to prove that, you know, hey, we're a good program right now. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, they're, they're a pretty storied program. They've always been good. And, um, obviously, they're always going to try and be in the hunt. And um, I think it's going to be a big weekend for both teams because both teams knowing going into the Christmas break that they have nothing to save it for. They can just empty the tank and, you know, have eight or nine days after to, to refuel. So I think it's going to be a good weekend, a good competitive weekend with both teams just working, working their absolute hardest. Steve, we appreciate you joining us. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hey, hockey fans in the desert southwest. Ice Time Hockey Southwest is officially bark approved. <laughs> Well, another great edition of College Hockey Southwest Weekly, our first podcast to go along with the webcast and everything else that we do with this program. And Tom Callahan, thanks again for stepping in and, and uh, weathering the IR again with that bad oh. back of yours. We gotta, we gotta get you on the, uh, on the men for good. Yeah, I, I don't know if I'll ever be on the men for good. <laughs> it's just one of those things that's always gonna be there. But you know what, Scott, it's, it's worth it for me to battle through the injuries <laughs> and to come through and to be a part of this team, uh, which, you know what, that seems like what the guys say a lot, isn't it? I mean, uh, this team, there's, there's little nicks and bumps and bruises right now, but as we've mentioned and, and keep knocking on these wood benches, Nothing major right now, which is huge. Yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, they're also going into a weekend series here. Then they're going to have uh, an eight-day break. And so they get a chance to heal up those little bumps and bruises so you can let it all out against Colorado College. But right yeah. now, I, these guys, uh, they're confident. They're riding high. They're feeling really good all the way down the roster about what they can do. You know, and we had two great guests. We had Johnny Loffner and the general, the uh, equipment manager. I almost call him the general manager, but he might be sometimes, hey, right? He could run the show. <laughs> so we got new uniform combinations that they're going to debut out of the, the Desert Hockey Classic at Gila River in less than a month now. Uh, we also had Steen Pashnik in, and Steen missed last weekend with uh, an ankle bruise, but he's ready to go, and that's one of the steam, you know, you just mix and match, don't you? Well, yeah, and, and it's the depth. We talk about the depth all the time, uh, which is hard to accomplish in college hockey. I mean, I, again, I yeah, hark back to last weekend. 
you've got a team in Princeton's got the best line in the nation, but beyond that, there's a bit of a drop off. So, I mean, if those guys are going, yeah, your team's gonna, gonna be competitive, but if you somehow take those guys away, um, you know, there's not much beyond that. You can kind of say that about ASU, yep. but you also can't because so many different guys have stepped up at different times this year, Scott, and made a difference. And we saw that this weekend, uh, that, you know, different guys every night. I think that gives you even more confidence that if the Johnny Walkers of the world are not going, someone else can fill in. Absolutely. Well, Tigers last weekend, Tigers this weekend. Anybody got cinnamon? Because I understand that from what I've heard last weekend, the Tigers don't like cinnamon. Interesting. So can we sprinkle it around the Oceanside Ice Arena just to give us a little bit of a head start? Because two more wins, Tom, that means 14 already. 14 before the break would be big. Uh, and I, I know you keep uh, 22. Um, and even at a point, maybe before the UNO series, the second time around, I was thinking maybe 24. So Scott could have been possible for these guys. Um, but you know what? The belief is there that they can do it, that okay. they can make the tournament, they could stay in the top 10 in the pairway wise, and they can work their way maybe even top 10 nationally. This is a really good program. Now they're going to have some tests in front of them. And this weekend's one of them. You can't look past Colorado College. You know, we're on semester break here at ASU, so the guys are getting a little time off. They're going to get a chance to go home after the Saturday's game and, and go back and see family and friends. And, and let's hope that that's a positive thing and doesn't turn into a distraction thing before the, uh, the Desert Hockey Classic because we're fortunate to have four of the best teams in the country right here in our backyard. Yeah, it's going to be great. If you like college hockey, if you like hockey, period, you should definitely come out and watch this tournament because it's a very high level of hockey. Uh, but yeah, sometimes you go home, eat a little of the home cooking, you relax a little bit. Hopefully the guys, I mean, you know, go home and, and have some meatballs or, or goulash or whatever it is that your mom makes, but also make sure you hit the bike a few times during the week and, and just, you know, stay active and, and then come back and they got two days of practice and then right into the tournament. Absolutely, Coach. So they'll be back on the ice on the Sunday or on the 26th in the evening. They'll be back out on set on Thursday the 27th. With uh, we'll be out there with uh, all the teams getting a little bit of ice time at Gila River, and then things start for real on the 28th and 29th. It's going to be an exciting weekend. It's going to be a lot of fun. I can't wait. All right, Tom. Thanks again for stepping in for us today. We hope everybody tunes into the podcast and tell your friends, folks. College Hockey Southwest Weekly is on the rise.